Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm your host Sandman. Today we're going to be doing a super huge unboxing from Covert Instruments. Let's get into it. I have no idea what is in this box. I received an email that I had a package inbound from Covert Instruments. Normally how this works is I will reach out to my point of contact of Covert Instruments and I'll say, hey, I just saw you sent me a package you know, uh, what is it? And, um, you know, can I do an unboxing? Like, you know, I have no idea what they're sending me. And they just say, oh, uh, it's the Riz pick. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So they're sending me a product for review. I'm not an ambassador. I, I'm not an affiliate with them. They're just sending me an, a product for an honest review. Uh, so I'm like, okay, no problem. And then they send me this ginormous box. <laughs> I have no idea what's in this thing. Um, if, if it's a severed head, I'm going to be very upset. Just kidding. Quoting Wayne's World there. Uh, let's see here. Showing my age. God, that's like a 30-year-old movie at this point. There we go. No idea what to expect with this box. I can only imagine. Your guess is as good as mine. They're very cryptic. The people at Covert Instruments is, are very cryptic. <laughs> what? What is this? What is this? <laughs> okay. All right, we got a rubber chicken, which I love. I'm gonna put this on my mobility scooter and I'll be my horn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man. Oh, okay, we got a note here and we got a whole bunch of product. Holy crap. Holy crap, look at this. This is incredible. All right, well, let's, let's, oh man, let's read what we have here first. And then we will do the unboxing, I guess. I don't know how to do this. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Hey, Sandman, regarding the replicant bands, we specifically didn't mention anything about LPU when releasing the bands as we didn't want to appear as though we were granting LPU belt status. And we didn't mention you by name because we didn't want people going after you for the same reason. However, if you'd like us to add you to the description with credit, we are happy to do so. Wow. Um, no, I mean, they don't have to do that at all. Uh, so I had mentioned in the replicant video uh an idea for ranked bands like karate bands to represent the belt ranking and they came out with the product like a couple weeks later or maybe it was a couple months later and uh and i had mentioned it in a video that they came out with it but man i'm not sour about it at all i think it's great that you like my idea that's so cool um so many companies don't listen to my ideas so i'm just happy you guys and that makes sense um, that, you know, you don't want to misconstrue uh, someone from Reddit or LPU that you guys are certifying or giving rank. It's just a cool, like, novelty thing that people, once they get a, a belt, you know, in the karate belt ranking system, you know, I'm currently a red belt right now. I've picked one black belt lock. I need to pick another and do some other side quests. But I now wear a red band when I go to my lock sport meetups. I have it in the other room. Otherwise, I'd show you. But that's so cool that they do that. And that's crazy that they were thinking of me in that process. Process. No, like I think what you guys are doing great. No, uh, that's wonderful. As of now, we do not have full Reaper sets in stock. However, we did include the new Slim Tickler. It's a Slim Pickens, but instead of a Riv Pick, it's the new Riz Pick. This hasn't even hit the market at the time we sent it to you. Wow. We are in possession. In, excuse me. In possession. We are in a position of change over on the Lock Sport Trainer since master lock sucks the original locks had an eight month lead time Jeez, we also like pack lock better and we plan to source cylinders from them in the future stay tuned yes that's awesome because you are a collector of things we also included a few more things to add to that collection also included is a chicken to choke and a 3D printed wang for good measure. God bless these guys. I love their sense of humor. That is so cool. This is going on my refrigerator. Super cool. Rob is one of the owners of Covert Instruments. That guy is amazing. He does such amazing stuff for the community. He raises money for people in the community. He brings awareness to things that are happening in the community. And these guys really look after people in Locksport. That's so cool. So very cool love that and uh let's see here let's let's take a look at everything that's in here man there's so much here oh man so much i may have to do a giveaway i don't know i'm definitely going to be giving away this stuff for my lock sport meetup group when that is active currently my 
meetup group is is taking a hiatus until my health condition gets better. Wow, they sent me a lot. Wow, this is fantastic. Look at that. That is too cool. Man, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm definitely going to be giving this away to my lock support group. That is fantastic. They gave me some real awesome goodies here. It, the, the gifts just keep coming. That's fantastic. Man, that's incredible. Thank you so much, Cohort Instruments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at that. Oh, man, so this was actually on my buy list. Oh, snap. Here we go. They sent me another replicant. This is fantastic. I made, mistakes were made with my replicant and they sent me a new one. God bless these people. Now I can do a review video. I didn't want to do a review. I did I did something wrong with my replicant and, and permanently damaged it. And I, I didn't want to do a review. Everybody's been asking me, how come you don't do a review? Well, because I, I damaged mine in a way that I, I will just show you eventually in the future. And I'll it'll be a warning lesson to all of you. Don't do this, but now I have a brand new one. Thank you, Covert Instruments. I'm actually going to make this a part of my everyday carry someone's gonna say you're not gonna need it sam man i don't care this is one of the coolest products that are available on the market to date super practical super lovely i love this thing thank you so much rob thank you covered instruments thank you and thank you for the refills i actually i actually have so much dirt time with my uh with my replicant that i went through all of these except for two i think so I did a bunch of castings with this. It's one of my favorite toys. My hands were black and green. The very first prototypes came with black clay and green clay. And then they realized that it's it's really going to stain a lot of things. So they came out with this... Uh, with the skin colored clay instead. And it's it, it doesn't have the same ink you know, staining properties. So this isn't going to stain your skin or anything like that. So that's really cool. Thank you for sending that to me. Man, they sent me two... Of these so i'm definitely going to be doing a, a review i did an unboxing of it i didn't do the review because i was like man i'm running out of this casting stuff and i'm super broke thank you so much oh man thank you i really appreciate that i absolutely need that they sent me so many of these bands this is wonderful so i run a lock sport group and i average between 12 to 18 people that show up to my group i'm going to use these for my group in the giveaways or anytime i go to a lock sport meetup i'll be sure to take these with me thank you so much i'm currently a red belt let's see if there's a red color in one of these if not it's, not, it's okay i'm sure that there is yeah right here that's great i'm gonna put that on right now and these can also be used with the replicant you could that's essentially what it is it's a band that you can put around the replicant and um you know you can put whatever color the replicant typically comes with a black colored band right there um, but you can buy the rank that you have earned on discord and reddit and you can support you know your luck pickers united uh with that i think that's super cool that they do that um i'm really glad that they sent these to me thank you very much i'm, I'm going to keep a full set for myself uh, to put on display so i can be uh, you know show my pride in my love for covert instruments my love for lock pickers united and my pride for having gone through all the belt ranks man i was a for those of you that think you're struggling you're not struggling it took me three days to pick my first lock. It took me two days after that to pick it a second time. I was a blue belt for seven years from 2017 to 2023. So I don't know, math. Uh, yeah, that's close to seven years. We'll call it six or seven years. And I have, I got to purple and brown inside of six months and I've been a red belt for three months. And I had to take a hiatus from picking high security locks due to health issues. It's just really hard right now, but I will get back into the swing of things. Thank you so much, Covert Instruments, for sending these to me. This set is gonna be for me. This other ones are gonna be taken to the Locksport Meetup Group, and I will be giving these out as people earn them. Thank you very much. Thank you, that's awesome, super awesome. They sent me a lot. This, man, they sent me three, four, five, six. Let me put these away. Seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15, including the one I Thank you. No, man, that's that's so, they're so kind to think that, to think of me. Like, man, I hope I didn't come off cross. No. Um, yeah, they were like, uh, you know, we didn't mention you by name because we didn't want people going after you. That's what they do. They think of people, and I appreciate that. No, I never considered it. I was just like, hey, they came out with a product that I mentioned in my video. That's awesome. So I was just happy somebody, you know, listens or watches my videos in the first place. So that's super cool. This 
Must be from the custom shop. I don't know if these are empty. They feel like they have some weight to them. Let's see what's going on there. I really like this. I love this. I, I'm pretty sure this is probably something that I've seen in a McNally video, I'm sure. That's awesome. Thank you. That's super cool. I mean, I can't, I just, I just can't believe they sent me a replicant. That's so cool. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So it's like, you already have one. I know, but I've used it so much. I really wanted a, a brand new one that I could uh, put in my everyday carry. That is awesome. Thank you very much. I'm taking that with me to the, uh, to the lock picking competition here in two weeks. So, um, uh, if you're not familiar with that, you'll have to just stay tuned. So I want to open up the, the slim tickler. And, oh, look at that. So these are the key gauges that they designed for the replicant. This came out after the replicant was released. So that's super cool. And that's going to be very beneficial for my review. That's one. Oh, snap. They sent me two of them. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Man, this is great. I'll, I'll, I'll add one of, set, one set of these. I'll add, to, uh, I'll add to a giveaway in the future. That's what I'll do. So thank you. So... Um, these are metal, and we have a quick set, and we have Schlag, and we have Master Lock and American Lock. Fantastic. Fantastic. Man, that's what I actually, that's what I carry. I carry, uh, I carry leashy tools that I purchased from Covert Instruments, and I carry a quick set, KW1, Schlag SC20, and I carry a Master Lock. I slay American Locks at this point. I'm not even worried. People say, what about Master Lock? Master Lock can be little tough SOBs, because especially if they're sitting out in the rain and they get corroded. But I carry the um the uh the, the 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 riv pick here and a set of covert instruments turning tools this is part of my everyday carry so i'm really excited to get into the slim tickler but first let's take a look at what they have sent me what appears to be have come from the the custom shop i don't know if these are full i don't know what's in these okay so we do have a set of picks here and 20 thou hell yeah hell yeah look at this oh snap look at that Oh, that's from the custom shop. It's from the custom shop. Look at this. Oh, snap. God bless. Look at that. That is so cool. Man, it's the wave. Yes. Yes. That is super cool. Thank you so much. Very nice. I don't know if that's coming in focused or grainy. I'm sure it's coming in grainy. But um, that is fantastic. Part of uh, one of my favorite sets of all time is I have a prototype of their etched tools here. And um, I was able to get this set while I was in town in Virginia at their manufacturing facility there. And I saw this sitting on like a table. And I was like, can I have this? And they were like, you'll have to ask Rob. And Rob's like, well, man, it's a prototype. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Can I have it? He's like, yeah, yeah. Because that's what I do. I ask people for things. Because the worst thing they can say is no. You know, so he let me have it. This is a really rare uh, prototype because they actually did the etching on the pick itself, which I absolutely think is super cool, but it's not as smooth or practical as the ones that they're doing now. I love that they're not etching the pick profile. It's a win-win either way, uh, but you do sacrifice some of the feedback and some of that uh, if they do etch uh, the profiles. So I have the topographic here as my um, as my prototype. And then I have the wave in 20 thousandths. Yes, that's going to be part of my everyday carry, guaranteed. Oh, man, thank you so much. And they gave me some turning tools and a case. Like, this is a $50 product, guys. $50 product. I'm going to be doing a review on all these individually. Not that it needs a review, but just to say thank you, I'm going to. Oh, look at this. I know what this is. This is the samurai. I already know because I, I recognize what could be possibly uh, cherry blossoms in the back. And I see the, the samurai helmet right there. That's how well I know their products. That's how well. Look at this. Oh man, now I have to collect all of their, their pick sets. <laughs> okay, now I gotta collect them all. Oh man, it's like Pokemon. Look at this. Look at this. We got the samurai. This is the coolest thing ever. This is something that companies like uh, Sparrows have dabbled in. Sparrows, I think, were the, among the first companies to uh, do some type of etching, but they just stopped making new product. Like they, I think the last product they put out was a couple years ago, like the Medusa or something like that, I don't know. But, um, or maybe it was the Sandman or something. Everybody confuses that with me, it's not me. It's named after some DJ in the 80s. I don't know, some drug dealer, whatever. But this, this is cool. This is cool. 301 high yield stainless steel, the strongest tool steel in the market for lock picks in 20 thousands, my favorite thickness. I love 18 to 20 thou, and we have them etched. 
Super cool. Very cool. I love it. And man, I'm, I have two more sets, uh, but the other two sets are actually, that are etched, I have two sets that are hanging on my wall. And those are actually very limited edition sets. Um, so maybe someday I'll, I'll show them, maybe uh, maybe next time. But uh, all right, I don't even know what's in here. No idea what's in here. But whenever you buy a Chop Shop uh, set, um, you're, you're going to get a tag of like authenticity. And I think these are really going to hold value for collectors because I think some of these are going to be end up being limited edition in the end, um, even if they're not. I just think it, it just makes it fun for the collector to, to purchase these. Super cool. Oh man, yes. That's awesome. So they sent me another topographic set. So now I have the prototype topographic set and they send me an official one. And it is different. It is completely different. The etching is much deeper and darker. The uh, topographic lines here, um, I, I think that's the term for them. You'd think I know, I was a map reader in the Marine Corps. It is much deeper and darker. Let's put it side by side with the, the prototype here. Yeah, it's like night and day, folks, night and day. You may not be able to see it. There you go, that's this angle you can see it. Much darker here than the prototype. So that's, this is even better than the prototype. Prototype looks great. Prototype looks really good, but this is even better. These etched picks are absolutely worth their money. Absolutely worth their money. Um, I will be collecting them. When that circuit board becomes available in 20,000s, I will be buying that for certain. And I hope they can start letting you like, I would love to get a whole set of all of the Covert Instruments picks and get them all etched in the same thing, or just maybe even all um, topographic or get them all etched in the circuit board. That'd be super cool. Thank you so much, Covert Instruments. Thank you so much, Rob. Man, you guys are so great. They, they take care of the people in this community so much, man. Jeez. Thank you. That is just absolutely wonderful. Whew, man, I'm like getting out of breath here. This is, I'm like, I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed, super cool. You get, some of you guys don't know this, but when I hit 5,000 subscribers, Covert Instruments sent me a plaque to celebrate my 5,000s with an etched pick with my emblem on them. So uh, with my logo, my brand. So they've just done so much for me and never asked for anything in return. I can't get over that. So thank you so much. All right. Moment of truth, folks, the unboxing of the Slim Tickler. Um, kind of like a play on words of the Slim Pickens. So first off, we have the Slim Pickens right here, and that has the Riv pick inside with turning tools. This is a really awesome everyday carry. So um, I, it's so awesome that I keep, I, keep the, uh, I keep an extra Riv pick right here. And I have another Riv pick in here. <laughs> and my covert companion. So let's let's do this. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna um, upgrade at some point. I'm gonna buy the top. They make a topographic version of the covert instruments, and I'm gonna. That'll be a matching set. Yeah, and then I'll put the uh, I'll put the Riz pick inside the Slim Tickler, and it'll be the topographic one. I'll be purchasing that here in a couple weeks once I get paid. Very cool. So there's the turning tools. I know everybody's like, dude, just open it. I know, I'm sorry. Here it is, Riz pick. Man, I've been waiting for this thing for a very long time. Probably not as long as McNally who designed the tools here. He's probably waiting for longer. Um, I have been, I've been waiting ever since I definitely heard about it. This is great. 301 high yield stainless steel, 285,000 pounds per square inch of ultimate tensile strength, about there. Um, these are gonna be the, made of the strongest tool steel available on the market. Most of the tool steels that uh, companies use is gonna be a 301 full hard, and that's gonna come in at nearly 100,000 pounds to 120,000 pounds less than what the tool steel is used by Covert Instruments. Covert Instruments goes above and beyond when it comes to quality. This is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. When when I first started doing reviews, <laughs> look at that shine. Look at that shine. When I first started doing reviews of Covert Instruments tools last summer, 2023, people were like, Sandman, um, you know, like they're made by Southern Specialties, uh, 301 Full Hard, nobody. The uh, Covert Instruments makes them themselves. This is Fantastic. Fantastic. I love it. And 
If you're worried about the rivet here, it's actually a completely different rivet than what they have used in the past. So in the past, we actually have seen previous iterations here. So this is version two of the Riv Pick right here. This is an upgraded version of the Riv Pick here uh, with that flat rivet there. Uh, let me pull out my Slim Pickens. The Slim Pickens here should have the version one of that rivet. Not that you guys care, but this is how big of a geek I am. Okay, so I have version two here. So version one should be here. Let me take a look. No, I got rid of my version ones. I, I, I don't even remember doing it. Huh, let me take, yeah, I don't have my version one. So a version one and version two was version one was rounded, uh, a little bit more rounded on that rivet and it was super tight. You had, to really, you had to put some oil on it and work that oil in, it was super tight. However, these are a lot easier to maneuver and um, give you a little bit more play, which I like, I would prefer that. Um, however, there's a nice happy medium with this rivet that was chosen here. Um, we have a, a, a it, I'm guessing it's a rivet, because it's, but it's sealed on both sides. Um, we don't have an, an open end like that with that hole there. I'm sure a machinist is gonna say Sandman, <laughs> You're just making words up. This is what it's called. And I love that this is nice and stiff, yet it's going... Sorry, the camera's shaking as soon as I did that. This is nice and stiff, but yet it's just enough play for this to work. That's, that's hard to do. That's really hard for somebody to design intentionally. They have to go through a lot of iterations to do that. That's fantastic. And this is my first glimpse of what I'm going to experience with the McNally Reaper set, essentially. So this is a first look at the Reaper set. Um, I love these profiles. It's a slightly different from what we're used to. Uh, most of these are going to be very similar to what a Christine, Christina Palmer may have designed. Um, influenced by Christina Palmer uh, with the Genesis pick sets because the Genesis picks are highly influenced by other previous tool sets um, that have been made uh, on the market. Um, Christina Palmer being a, a very famous designer, but these are very unique. Um, I, I, let me show you something real quick. Let me see here. If I can attempt to do this. Get some paper out here. I'm going to outline this with a pencil to show you what I can see because I won't be able to get that on camera very well. So what I see that you won't be able to see very well is there's a very subtle slope here before we get that medium hook. And what that is, is that creates... It's a medium hook, but that gives it the depth of a deep hook. And that makes it so practical because I don't have to worry about trying to, this, if this was a deep hook, it'd be very difficult in paracentric keyways. So keyways that, you know, are crazy and look like that, you know, I just drew a, uh, I just drew a Euro cylinder for, for no reason whatsoever. Um, so you have to basically pick this lock either right here off of the keyway there, or you can pick it right here, but it has to be real shallow, a really short hook, really short rounded or flat hook. This will lend itself because overall, that thickness here, the height, is all that matters in the keyway. That height overall is all that matters. However, this slope here gives it more depth. So you can pick pins um, that are shallow, that are behind very uh, low cut pins that are in the front. So that's something that is going to be, um, that's probably not going to be seen very well from a beginner's eye, but that's something that um, I see and I appreciate there. And so that's the pick profile number five. Let's go to number four. So number four has the same uh, cutaway here and it's a flat hook so that makes it a medium hook but it's still a short 
or a low flat hook profile overall. Let me see if I can draw that. My drawing doesn't know justice, but there's a very, very gentle slope here. But the height of the profile overall is what qualifies this as a, what I would call a short flat hook, but that cutaway, that subtle cutaway makes it as capable as a medium flat hook. So it's basically all you need. And then we have a very, very low flat hook, very similar to what we would see from HPC in the past. Very classical profile here, which is optimum for bottom of keyway tensioning and for highly paracentric keyways. So if I was picking this ABIS lock right here, I would wanna use bottom of keyway. Let me get a tensioner here. Uh, all these tool sets and I threw them on the ground. There we go. Nope. Nope. All right, we'll just do this. Okay. So with this Yale, this is probably like a Y1 or a Y6 or something. With this Yale, we can use top of keyway here, um, but you can also use bottom of keyway because it's so paracentric. Gotta get the right size. So paracentric that the warding, the milling of the plug crosses itself. Um, we call them, it, it's, it's not a warded lock, but it has warding or milling and it crosses each other. So I can pick because even if I were to try to attempt top of keyway here, okay, I would still have to pick off of one of these wardings, okay? So it's best to use bottom of keyway, but now I gotta use a really shallow hook and that's the benefit of that hook right there. So that's fantastic. And this is a really hard lock to pick, <laughs> but we'll give it a try, why not? We'll use Covert Instruments tools. I'm not gonna probably be successful in video with this, but it's just such a really perfect shallow hook here that it just, yeah, that's that's ideal for this type of keyway. And that's what's funny is I get a lot of questions with people asking about tools for, um, for that are North American tools. Are they okay for European style uh, keyways? And I, I tell them, like right now, I'm just trying to get the tool into the back of the lock to, to behind the pins there, right there. So now I'm in. And that's why you need that short, shallow hook because you have such little room to work with here. So, um, yeah. So I tell people, yeah, that, yeah, they work. It's all about profile selection. It's not about shank thickness overall, in my opinion. Um, it's about profile thickness here. So that's fantastic. I, I need a little bit more time to work with this um, on this particular lock. I'm not trying to pick this lock necessarily, but um, that's fantastic. I know I just spent five minutes talking about a single profile. <laughs> if you're here, though, that's what you get. That's what you're getting from me. So we have these McTicklers. Uh, I think they're called the McTickler because it's like the McNally, but it's, it calls them the Tickler. And um, these are specifically for speed picking. And it is such a revolutionary profile and design. And it's a revolutionary uh, style of technique that it really, that camera's shaking the whole time. I'm so sorry. So these are fantastic. It's essentially a rake and a short hook all in one. So it's like a, a, a Bogota slash uh, flat hook hybrid. And um, then we just have a short hook there. This would be really great for even more. I should have used that one on that Yale. Uh, that's what I should use. This is fantastic for highly paracentric keyways. These are brand new profiles that have never been seen on the market as of today, uh, September 9th. September 9th, these have not been seen anywhere else on the market other than McNally's videos and uh, Georgia Gym, uh, Lady Lux, and anybody else that was sent product in advance. Uh, these are new, that's what's fun. And let's talk about how to use those. I don't have any master locks in front of me, but I can show you um, the theory behind it. So the theory behind these 
is you're going to want to use, you could probably use top of keyway, but uh, we'll, we'll use bottom of keyway here. And the theory is that I'm going to dive in to my lock. I'm going to lift up and rake out. Dive in, rake out. And the theory is that I may have had a probability of one in five or two in five or three in five of pins setting just based off of that. And to, to, to test that theory, let's release our tension. There's one pin, two pins, three. So I had about three pins, not necessarily set because they can be underset and overset based off of our five pin states. Uh, but, uh, or the four pin states rather, uh, but um, there's a high like likelihood that you are setting them. Um, I've seen him do this on locks with spool pins and serrated pins and spool serrated pins and all manner in between. So this works. This lock does not have security pins. So the idea is provide light tension, dive in, dig up. And then from here, we use the same profile and we look for those non-binding pins. So pin one feels like it may have been set. Pin two is now set. Pin three may have been set. I just dropped pin two. Pin four, pin five, and let's go back. So this isn't a technique that I've mastered just yet, but let's one, so I had one pin set there. Um, but it's that's what that's what he does, and I've seen people do it. Lily, uh, who's on my competition team, she's amazing at that technique, and McNally's amazing. I have I haven't figured it out yet, but that's a it's literally hybrid picking, and it's a technique designed specifically, or this profile is designed specifically for that technique, rather. And then you go hunting, you can uh, go hunting for the binding pins. And I clearly need practice with that methodology and these tools. But I want you to notice how I'm holding this tool. I'm holding it just like I would hold a lock pick. And notice, and I got some movement in the core there. I noticed that the tool is not folding on itself. A lot of people may think that this rivet would cause the tool to fold on itself and that you need a locking tool, but you don't necessarily uh, need it to be locking. It's not folding on itself at all. getting a lot of these pins to set, but I think what I'm doing is I'm oversetting some pins as well. So that's okay. I say, man, I can't pick a quick set. I know I'm, I'm also trying to do this on camera with a tool that I haven't spent a lot of time with. So that's fantastic. I've, I've seen prototypes of this, but it was a different tool steel. And, um, it was just a prototype. It was just to get the profile in the hands of the testers. And I think this is fantastic. Let's take a look at the final profile here. Man, this is a nice tight rivet and it's not too tight. It's, a, it's perfect. It's exactly where it needs to be. That's so hard to do as an engineer, I would imagine. I love it. I love the cutaway here. I love everything about these picks. Let's do top of keyway and we'll try some single pin picking on this quick set lock. And if I can't open it, I will shoot myself off camera. I'll commit. Sapuku. There we go. So I need to hone my hybrid picking skill, but for single pin picking, fantastic. I use top of keyway there and I use the profile number one. Fantastic. I love this. And I love that it says Riz pick on it. That's classy as hell. I love it. Fantastic. Whew. So I'm going to be doing a video just on the Riz pick and it's going to be an assembly video where I will assemble the Riz pick. Um, it's going to be like, you know, the Riz pick and assembly. That's what I'll call the video. I will put that out in a day or two. So that way, all of you that have purchased this, if you need to follow along, you will have the instructions on how to do that. Folks, if you made it this far into my video, you are obsessed with lock sport as much as I am. And I appreciate all of you. Um, man, I can't thank all of you enough. 
So thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for being my follower. And thank you so much for making it this far into the video and the journey of, of me being an idiot live on TV. So that's all I have for today, folks. Let me know in the comments down below, did you purchase any Covert Instrument stuff this past week? The Reaper set is gonna be releasing tomorrow. This video is gonna publish on the 10th, and uh, which is a Tuesday, September 10th. And the Reaper set's going to release tomorrow, September 11th. So keep an eye out on your emails, keep an eye on the, the website. I don't know if they're gonna sell out. I suspect that they could. So if you are interested in picking up the Reaper set, I would highly recommend you make that purchase tomorrow. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if that's something you're going to do. Check out their uh, karate band colors. Uh, if you can, you know, uh, support, show your support for Lockpickers United. Thank you so much, Covert Instruments, for everything here. I'm going to be doing a review of all the products that you have sent me individually. This is just an unboxing. That's all I have for today, folks. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys next time.